sat down in front of this camera and filmed in my room so I wanted to come back and tell you guys since summer is approaching if it's not already here how to travel on a budget if you guys follow me on any of my social media you guys would already know I've already started posting a lot of travel pictures from where I've already been and I've gotten a lot of questions about how I'm able to afford it how do I have the time how do I find the places how do I find these cheap tickets so I'm really passionate about traveling. It is something that I see myself making a job one day or having my job have me travel a lot. So I just wanted to share some things that I've learned along the way. Now remember there are a lot more people out in the world who have figured this out better than I have, who probably have better knowledge, more knowledge about cheaper ways to do it. But this is what I've learned so far that has worked for me. So let's just jump into it. The first advice that I would have is for you guys to travel on off season. Off season is usually between September and October. Sometimes it may be uh, February, uh, the baby, not the beginning of the months, but almost before summer. And then right after summer is where the off seasons may be. So usually people like to travel during September because tickets are cut dramatically. A cruise that may have been $500 originally may be cut down to $299, sometimes $216. So traveling during off season is a huge way to save money if you aren't in school that's why tickets do get priced lower is because that children are going back to school after summer so of course not a lot of people are going to be able to buy those tickets because they may have kids my second tip is to use apps like groupon there are probably more apps out there that will show you um, other coupon deals for traveling but one of the things that i do want to do is take one of those Groupon apps, I always choose flight included, and this usually will include maybe breakfast, your flight, sometimes it includes a car for you to drive, and it also includes excursions and your hotels for the, for the price that's already advertised, plus your taxes of course. There could be trips as low as $6.99, which includes all those that I just included in that price, so it's relatively really cheap to go do those things. Now you will hear backpackers say that it's way more cheaper to just go backpacking than to do apps like this, but to be honest or to just be realistic, a lot of us don't have time to backpack for a whole month. Sometimes you don't have to backpack for a whole month, but sometimes that's just not how a lot of other people would love to travel. I on one hand would love to go pack backpacking one day, but you know staying in hostels with like 15 other people sometimes makes other people uncomfortable. So I would say try Groupons. They have really great deals on traveling the world for like, you can go to Rome for like $1,000 and travel around Rome. I think that's a great deal. This includes your flight and everything. Okay, so one of the most obvious ones I feel like is to plan ahead. You want to see how much a ticket will cost before you want to go. I mean, at least two months. A lot of people will tell you six months in advance that you want to start planning your trip. Sometimes I don't do that because I, I am fortunate enough to go on websites like Cheap Tickets. There are other extremely more cheap websites for plane tickets, um, but I use Cheap Tickets on Google, cheap plane tickets on Google, and it will, I always click on the calendar and it'll tell me the prices all year for the flights. They'll give you green dates and gray dates. Your green dates is going to be the cheapest way to fly and your gray dates are going to be your highest and you know your normal prices. So I always, sometimes I just look at that and I never give myself a day that I'm looking at where I actually want to do something. I always plan it around those cheap dates for plane tickets. So go to cheap plane tickets on Google and type in the place you want to go to and then don't ever click a date, just click on the calendar and try to choose between those cheap dates, which are sometimes of course on weekdays, so I hear. Also, 
sometimes the airport that you fly out of and to can be the cheapest. So you, let's say your airport that's 15 minutes away from you is $800 to fly to the place that you want to go to, but you have three other airports in your area. Sometimes you can save $50, $100 just by leaving from that airport that's probably like 30 minutes away from you or 40 minutes away from you. Those extra savings can help a long way when you're actually on your vacation. Tip number four would be to look up on cheap tickets on Google and look at the map overview. So let's say you're trying to go into Europe and you want to go to Germany. Sometimes flying into a place close to Germany and taking a car or um, a more local flight or airport into Germany when you're already in Europe will be so much more cheaper than just flying directly into Germany from America or wherever you're coming from. So I wanted to jump on here and show you guys what I mean. So if you go to CheapTickets.com and you click on their map, it's going to give you the prices for all over the world. Now let's say you want to go to Germany, I would zoom into Germany and if I wanted to go into Frankfurt, it would cost me $2,817 to get there from where I live. Now instead of flying in there and spending $2,000, I would just fly into Warsaw, which is only $1,800. And then from Warsaw, I would go to Frankfurt, which would only cost me $161 to get from Warsaw to Frankfurt, which is the original destination that I want to go to. And if you put that into a calculator, I would say look at that map, look, let's say you're trying to go to Europe, look at where, where the cheapest place is to fly into and then get a connecting flight from that country. It will save you so much more money. I really hope that made sense. Tip number five would be if you're not going to be driving in, if you're not going to be flying international, if you can drive somewhere, drive. You don't always have to take a plane. Of course, it is faster to take a plane, but it is so much more cheaper sometimes to just drive there especially if you're going with a friend you could just split the cost of gas and if you have a good car you might as well just drive there like i remember i wanted to go to south carolina for it's a six hour drive from me it could have cost me two hundred dollars to get a plane ticket when it would have just cost me maybe seventy dollars if that to just drive there with gas to get there so you can you can save a significant amount of money if you just choose to drive i know it's sometimes a really long drive but it's a great way to bond you know zone out while you listen to music and so you can stop whenever you want to buy whatever snacks you want to because when you're on a plane you can't really do that so my next tip would be to use websites like, like Airbnb or FlipKey.com. Instead of buying a hotel or a resort, those can be so much more expensive because they have to pay the employees, the expenses, the taxes, pay for someone to clean your room every day, fresh linen every day, room service. It's just so much more expensive going through a hotel because they have to employ so many people. If you go to websites like Airbnb, you can get a full house for as cheap as $50 if you find it. And it's really possible that you will find it. I have found, I'm planning a trip to Aruba this year, hopefully, fingers crossed. I have already looked up on Airbnb some a handful of houses that I want to stay at. I found a three bedroom house for only $90 a night. Um, some of my family members are coming with me, which is why I was looking up three bedrooms, but three bedrooms for a full house one of them had a pool for only about $50 more on that website. So it is really a good bet to just rent a house for where you're going to be because it's so much cheaper, so much more convenient. You have your own kitchen, you have your own room, you have your own living room, your living space, your own shower. So those can be so much more convenient than a hotel and they're so much more cheaper as well because people who have a vacation house that they're not staying in as often they want to just rent it out as soon as possible to anybody who wants to stay they're clean i've never been scammed i've never had a dirty place and the people are just so nice to you so i would definitely say and also some of the places they some of the people will be living with you who, who own the house but you can find a house many houses condos and apartments where the people don't live there and it would just be you while you're renting out that place. So those are my two favorite websites, Airbnb and FlipKey.com. If you don't want to buy a condo or your family, if you're younger and wants to stay in a hotel, don't be scared of three-star hotels. 
you don't have to stay in a five-star resort all the time, you guys. You know, yes, they big, big names are great because you know that they have great service, but sometimes a smaller hotel who doesn't who don't get that many visitors is just as good. Most of the time, you're just going to be out on the beach anyway. You'll barely be staying in your room. The only time you stay in your room is probably when you want to go to sleep for like six hours and then you're ready to get up and do anything else. Don't be scared to get a lower star hotel. Always look at the reviews, of course, but sometimes if a hotel doesn't have a review, which that doesn't really happen very often, it's just probably because it may be a new hotel, it may be a small hotel that not a lot of people go to or not a lot of people know about. So don't be scared to save some money on a lesser star hotel. Another tip is to travel with a friend. If you are low on cash but you want to still take a vacation, bring a friend with you. A lot of people already know this. You can always just split the cost of the hotel and food with your friends. Now, I would say go on Airbnb and split that cost. $50 a night divided by two, that is a great deal. That is an awesome deal. As long as you're in the place that you want to be in on a exotic beach just relaxing it's worth it you guys just bring a friend if these options are still too op still too expensive for you if you can't really afford the groupon that's a thousand dollars to go to europe sometimes six hundred ninety nine dollars if it's too expensive for you to drive or you don't have a car if it's too expensive for you to still get the hotel and you still have to pay for the things you want to do and your food another cheap option op <laughs> another cheap option is to go on a cruise sometimes cruises are a little bit more expensive with the amount that you pay for your cruise, this includes your your clean room, your entertainment, your food, all you can eat food. And you're gonna be going to three different places sometimes on a cruise. Two to sometimes they only take you to one, those are pretty cheap. Sometimes they take you to two places, three places, four places. It just depends on where you want to go. Those are extremely cheap. Now for my next tip, which also correlates with my cruise tip, is to if you really want to save money, don't buy a room with a balcony or a window. Those are usually the most ex most inexpensive tickets are the ones that don't have a window. The way I see it when I want to save money, having a window is great on a ship, but most of the time you won't be in your room. You'll be at the club, you'll be out eating, you'll be relaxing by the pool, or you'll be at the beach. So the only time I ever went to my room was when I needed to take a shower and change and when I wanted to go to sleep. That was the only time. You don't need this extravagant room if you really want to travel but you want to save money. I always say it is better to experience things where you want to go. Don't worry about where you sleep. In my opinion, this is how I feel. As long as there's no bed bugs and it's not dirty and there's not a bad part of the community, then I'm fine. You know, always think and reason. If it's not dirty and has good reviews, don't worry about where you sleep. Worry about what you want to do while you're on the beach or while you're hiking or while you're on your destination because you're always going to be outside. That's just how I think. So these were a few of my tips on how to travel on a budget. So I went over Groupon, saving money on your hotels. If you can't do that, then go on a cruise. Let me know if you guys have any other tips down below that could also help other people. And also put down below what you use to travel on a budget because Sharing ideas is great. I love learning from other people about where to go, what's the cheapest destinations to go, when you're going to go, and also put down below what you guys are going to be doing this summer. Where, what exotic land are you guys going to be going to? I would love to hear. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.